Hello, church. How are you? God is good? All the time? We declare God is good all the time. I just want to, we celebrated Independence Day yesterday. And I, I, I tell you, this is probably the first year that as I in, celebrate Independence Day with my family, I was reminded the, true, the, the statement through which our nation began, which said, we hold this truth to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among, that among those are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We began, this nation began with powerful words many years ago. But as we celebrate Independence Day yesterday, I realized we are still fighting the struggle that, that whole, all the people have rights created equal by God. And we have history in our nation. We've been fighting for this thing. And, and we are still struggling the issues that we will affirm all people's rights and really let, build a society where all people are equal and have the freedom to seek liberty, life, and pursuit of happiness. Let's come to God in prayer. Father, we come before you right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come before you humbly, God. We give you thanks for your grace. We come before you right now. We lift our hearts before you, God. We come to meet with you. Father, we ask right now that you will speak to hearts and minds. That as we worship you, our hearts will turn to you. Our eyes will turn to you, God. That you'll meet us here. You'll speak to hearts and minds with your grace and mercy, God. We love you. We love you. We ask, Father God, that not just for great teaching or preaching, but we ask for your presence. You'll speak to hearts and minds. We want to behold your beauty and glory, God, and to love you and love you well. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I, am being, I was reminded yesterday, and as, I, as I pray for our nation, as, we cel- as I celebrate Independence Day, that what we say we believe, how we live out in our lives, often there's a big gap. We are learning, even as a Christians, how to live out God's truth in our lives. In the midst of the difficult times you're living in, about four or five weeks ago, God began to remind, remind me and bring our church to consider the core message of the gospel, that we will live according to and build life, our lives upon the truth of the word of God, that our lives will be built upon clear and firm foundation, the truth and the revelation of our God. Each case revealing the heart and face of our God. God really began to speak to us about four weeks ago, speaking to about his heart by reminding us the greatest command, which is to love the Lord our God with all of our being, and second being, love your neighbor, ourselves, loving our neighbor as ourselves. And God spoke to us about compassion of God's heart. God's compassion feels something, does something, and it caused something. It is greatly best manifested when our Lord Jesus died on the cross for us, on the cross, his compassion for us. And God also spoke to about, about his will, reminding us that, reminding about, of us about the great commission our Lord Jesus Christ gave when he was ascended to the Father, saying, go and make disciples of all the nations. And that you shall be my witnesses in all Jerusalem, all of Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the earth. It is God who spoke, who says, God who so loved the world, all the peoples in the world, that he gave his only begotten son. It is not, it is, our God is God who does not desire a single person to perish. He desires all to come to know God by trusting in our Lord Jesus Christ. And God also spoke to us about, reminded us about his heart 
as a father, perfect father God, through the uh, parable of the prodigal son and the father, and how God, perfect father, not only seeks after, goes after the lost one, the broken ones, yet also God patiently waits for his, those to, sinners to turn to him and find life and hope that is in him and back into his arms in his house. God reminded us last week that he has called us to be hope, house of prayer for all the peoples. It was God's desire that all the peoples will be gathered into the fa our Father's house, God, our Father's building a home and family with all the peoples. You are called to be that. Our God is Father of all peoples. You see, I realize God was speaking to us that one aspect of that, John 3, 16, God so loved the world. Today, God is leading us God was leading me into consider the central truth of the gospel message. And God is taking us to John 3.16. The title of the message is Way of the Cross. Text is from John 13, verse 1 through 11, and 12 through 17, and a couple of verses at the end, 34 and 35. It's a well-known passage. This is the night before Jesus goes to the cross, knowing that who he was, what time it was. He, Bible says, he loved his own till the end. Let me begin. I'm speaking, I, I want to read the passage. I want to tell you, I want to look at the story and hear what God is saying to us about the central message of the gospel, which is of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, before the feast of the Passover, John 13, 1, Jesus, knowing that his time, his hour had come, he would depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world. He loved them to the end. And verse 2, it says, during the supper, the last night before he goes to the cross, that Passover meal in the time, Bible says the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon to betray him. Jesus was in that place. Already Satan is working to, uh, on the steps to betray Jesus. Verse 3, he says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things to his hands, that he had come forth from God, and that he was going back to God. I want you to see this, what it says next. Gospel of John, Apostle John, that the powerful night, the night before Jesus goes to the cross, that special evening, he highlights what Jesus did on that night, the speak of our God's heart. He says, Jesus got up from the supper, laid aside his garments, taking a towel, he girded himself. And, and he, then he poured the water into the basin, began to wash disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel which he was girded. Let me just stop right here. You have, you have, you have, to, uh, the, you have to begin to see, you have to see the, what's happening, the picture here what's happening. In those days, the lowest of the lowest servant would be watch, washing the feet of the people in the room, the guests. Therefore, in the, that night, while well, they're having upper room, upper, in the upper room, last meal with Christ, Jesus, they were, no, nobody was, had their feet washed because nobody was willing to wash each other's, anyone's feet. They're all in their place. That night, Jesus, the Lord, the teacher, the, their, this, their, past, their leader, their pastor, their uh, God, their Lord, Jesus, took his coat off and took the towel, poured the water. He got on his knees, began to wash the feet of the disciples. They were shocked. They were moved. They were stirred. They were shocked. Now let me just stop here. One of my favorite passages in the Bible that speaks about what, what Jesus is doing here. I want to I wanna connect it with uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8, one of my favorite passages in the whole Bible. 
This is one of those places I think is probably one of the most holiest places in the whole Bible. Talks about our, our Lord Jesus. He says, have this, this edited in yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in likeness of men, and being found in appearance in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Apostle Paul speaks about Jesus going to the cross in this way. He says how God, he was his God. He humbled himself. He came to us, became a human being. He took the form of a human being. And not only that, he became a servant. He became a servant. He humbled himself and obeyed God the Father even to die on the cross. Apostle Paul explains, talks about the crucifixion, suffering of our Christ in, a, in this way, very poetic way. Let me go back to the story in John 13. So when Jesus you know, was washing the feet of the disciples, all the disciples were shocked, and they were stunned. They couldn't say a thing. When he came to Simon Peter, he said to him, verse 6, Lord, do you wash my feet? You see, Peter was embarrassed. Are you washing my feet? And Jesus said, and answered and said to him, what I do, you do not know now, but you will understand later, hereafter. You don't know what, you don't know what I'm doing right now. Peter, but you will know later. And the Peter says in verse 8, Never shall you wash my feet. I cannot let you do this. Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my master. I cannot let you wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Then P see what Peter says. If that's the case, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Every, if you have to wash me, I want you to wash me everywhere. Just like Peter. If you, if you have to wash me, please wash everything. I want more of you. And then Jesus said, he who has bathed needs only to be washed, only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are not, you are clean, but not all of you. Jesus saying, you're already cleansed by the word I've taught you. You only need, only need to be washed on your feet. Now, um, now, and at the time, disciples didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what Jesus was doing. And later in that, that night, Jesus began to explain to them what, what, was, what was happening so that they understand what's going on. Let me stop right here. For me, this, this what Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. I, I believe Apostle John was saying, this is a great picture of what Jesus would be doing very next day when, when Jesus would go to the, be betrayed and go to the cross and, 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 and he's crucified and die on the cross. What Apostle John is saying is when Jesus washed the feet that night, what he was actually doing is exactly foretelling a picture of what will be happening next day. Jesus poured out his blood by his sharing of his blood, he forgave us our sins. He washed us with all of our sins. He died on the cross to shed his blood for our sake to make us clean. You see, cross speaks of God's forgiving grace when he washed us who didn't deserve any forgiveness. He forgave us our sins. But Jesus goes on to explain and what, what, what he was doing that night. In verse 12, when he had washed their feet and taken his garments back on, he reclined at the table again. He said, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you right now? And verse 13, you call me teacher, Lord. You are right. So am I. So I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, wash your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. 
You see, this whole week as I've been seeking God and praying before God, God reminding me, God reminding me the truth. Cross is not only the place where God forgave us our sins, where God sacrificed and, and shed his blood to forgive us our sins. Cross is so much more than that. Cross is so much more than God's forgiving grace manifested, manifested on the tree. It's more, so much. It is more than God's love manifests to us. It is also the way. Jesus said, I'm the way, truth, and life. Not only, not only did Jesus die on the cross, the way he died for us was an example for us. Jesus said, if I, the Lord teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Because Jesus came as a servant of all. In Mark chapter 10, verse 45, Jesus said, Even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and it gave his life for ransom for many. Let me stop right here. Let me just talk a little bit. You see, this word, we are always fighting for right. We are always fighting for our own thing. The modus operandi, the way this world works is by way of force, by way of strength. If I don't have it, I'll knock you out. I'll get what I want. And this is how we live our lives, that we live by our own strength, our own energy. We, we are good at taking things away from others, and this is how we live. We live in that way. And the, the rulers, the leaders in this world rule and lord over people. But our God didn't do that. Our God, when he came to save us, he didn't come as a king and the ruler who rules over people with power. He came as, first of all, as a servant who would sacrifice all for the sake of others and who would sacrifice his life for, to forgive them. He came as a servant, yet servant of God. Look at what it says. Next verse, John 13, 15, it says, For I give you an example that you also should do as I did to you. You see, Apostle John wanted to let all the Christians know, know that as he talked about Christ the night before he going to a cross, when he, when, he, when he washed the feet of the disciples, pointing to the death and of our Lord Jesus, he's saying he was not only dying on the cross, he was giving an example how we ought to live. He is the way, truth, and life. I found this a good, uh, I like this pic. The first there, I love it too, but look at what it says. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Isn't that what Jesus did? No longer do I call you servants, I call you friends. He came as the great friend who will sacrifice and lay down his life for his friend. Look at what it says. Jesus goes on. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than the master. No is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus now said, this is an example. Jesus said, you'll be blessed if you do these things. Not only, not, he's not saying we should be washing feet, people's feet all the time. It is an example. It is really reminding us that life is calling us to live. Life a humble love for each other. Look at what it says. And then he goes on in that, that night Jesus goes on to say, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Even as I've loved you, that you also love one another. See, there was the point of the washing of the feet. See, there was the point one of the truth about the cross. Yeah, yes, yes, at the cross, God sacrificed and shed his blood and forgave us all our sins. But also on the cross, he gave us a way, an example, a command to live in this life. Follow his example. 
of serving and sacrificing, loving, command to loving others as Christ loved us. He didn't just love us with words. Gotcha didn't say, I love you. He actually felt, felt our pain, and he came to us. He did something. He, it costed his life. He loved us even dying on the cross, giving his life for us. That's the command God was giving. It's when Jesus died on the cross, not only was he forgiving us our sins, they were, he was giving us command, you love others like me. You follow and live as I have called you to live. A new command, man, I give to you. Love one another as I have loved you. So much more than just love. We talk about love these days. It's all of our feelings. The, the love our God talks about, the God is calling us to live, which he loved us with, is the love that does something, calls something. We go all the way to even die for something, for our sake. And, and, and Jesus also goes on to say, next verse is in John 13, 35. By this, all people will know that you are my followers, my disciples, my people, if you have love for one another. She said, this will be the proof that you are my people. This will be the proof that you belong to me. This will be the proof that you are following me. If you have love for one another. Isn't that powerful? He's not calling us for some kind of religion to do these things. You may go to heaven. No, not that. He's calling us the life he wants us to live. This is his command for us, to love as he has loved us. This will be a proof that we belong to him. This is what Apostle John says in the letters, the first John. He says, by this we know that we love. And, and you cannot, you don't just say without words, but actually if you help, you actually give. Love one another in the way. I like this cute uh, pic that I found in Google search. I don't play Scrabble. I like V, it's four points on the thing. By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Let me talk to us. Let me, let me talk to all of us here. How do I know that I'm in God? How do I know that I am walking in God? Best proof is that if I love one another as he loved us, loved me. That's the best proof that I belong to him. If I do not love my brothers and sisters, and I have to very seriously doubt whether I really know God. I like this. This one better. I like this even better. I, I wish I thought about this. It's so good. We, as Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, he was saying that night, you serve like Jesus. You love like Jesus. Jesus. This is how a church, a family is built in the body of Christ. We, are, we don't build a family of God by demanding my ways. We build a body of Christ, a family of God, by we thinking about the interests of others, not just going after our own selfish ambition and, and all the other things, but, but, but if it, instead with humility, considering others more important than ourselves, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Not only... Look out for our own personal interests, but also interests of the others. Have this mind which was also in Christ Jesus. That we love one another as Christ has loved us. Let me talk to us a little bit. Our nation is going through a difficult time. And we, we are going through a difficult time in this season. And I think God is reminding me, us, speaking to us whether we really are people of God, 
whether we really are living as God called us to live. He's taking us to the heart of the gospel. And the truth, this is who we are. We are people of the cross. I don't know if I have the uh, scriptures after that. Uh, in John chapter 14, verse 6, it's, Jesus says, I am the way, truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, the cross shows the love of God who shed his blood to forgive us our sins. The cross also shows us the way we are to live. Truth which we are supposed to believe. It's the kingdom of God. God's house is built as he follows the example. Jesus says, if anybody wants to follow up to me, let him deny himself, carry his cross daily. Mark chapter 9, verse 20. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. If anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself, carry his cross daily, and follow after me. We are called to follow after me, after him, our, our Lord Jesus. We are called to walk in his ways. Today we are, going to, we are celebrating communion in a few minutes. Communion reminds us that Christ shed his blood, gave his body, and he shed his blood, life for us, to forgive us our sins, but also reminds us, that tells us the command he gave us to go, a new command, which is love as he has loved us. To follow his example, we are called to follow him, walk in the way of the cross. Now, if you don't mind, I would like to sing a song. You know, it's okay. I, I can do it by myself. I can, I, you know, I, I don't need help. I can sing on my own a cappella. This is what I was singing all week long. I'm okay. There's an old song that is ringing my whole week. This song goes, On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, on the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners were slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trough is at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and it changed it someday for a crown. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. You see, the central message, truth of the gospel is the cross where our Lord God showed his mercy, also calls us to live, holding on to the cross, living and following the way of the cross, humbly following in his way. He came to serve. He came to love. He came to die for us. So shall we. For his kingdom, for his glory. Let's come to God in prayer. Father, we love you, we honor you, we thank you for that cross where you shed your blood, Lord Jesus, died to forgive us our sins, died to set us free from the power of sin, died to give us new life, died to give us hope, died to reconcile us to the Father. And, and gave us a peace. Father, we thank you. We love you, God. We come and hold on to the cross where you remind us, call us to follow you, to carry our cross daily, follow after you, God. We want to be more like you, Jesus. We want to live as people forgiven, living the life of forgiveness. We want to live as people who hold on, who serve a crucified Lord, 
We want to live a life that honors you and gives you glory, God. Oh, we hold on to the cross where our Lord God shed his blood and died for us. Where we find hope and life. We love you, God. We honor you, God. Help us to love as you love because you made us, created us in love. May call us to love. We love you, God. Guide and lead us, oh God. Let hope be people who are walking on the way of the cross. Loving as you call us to love. Living and following the footsteps of our Lord Jesus. So we give you glory, God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray.